Port Leeb's tastes good like a beer should. You said it. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> Try a frosty cold glass of Bavarian right away. What's that you say? No boulder dash or baloney here. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentleman. And now, with a higher BAC than your ABV, Greg, Scott, and Dan. That's right. Welcome in, everybody. We are the Unfiltered Gentleman. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining. Thanks for drinking along. I am Greg. Over there, that's Scott. Are we on? And that's Dan. Is it on? <laughs> it is on. Oh, okay. isn't it? Yeah, welcome. it's working. The welcome in. Working. Welcome, yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Is the color there? Uh... First time, long time. Isn't <laughs> <laughs> that what you say? Call her. She said. Yeah. Call him and Dick's in your mouth. You want to say what? <laughs> what? Call her. What is that from? I, to... <laughs> I think it's DJ Easy Dick. Oh. <laughs> DJ Easy Dick. One of my favorite DJs in the world. Uh, thank you all for listening. If you're still with us, our burp word of the week is Devil Horns. Ooh. That'll be a, a addressed in our beer of the week. Um, shout out to Wentworth Point, Australia. You know, I'm not, you, you can tell I'm not making this up because it would have been something easier to say. Yeah. Wentworth Point, Australia. Australia. Wow. Glad to hear you're not burning down. No kidding. And uh, oh yeah, or maybe they are. And uh, when the last, <laughs> the last thing you heard was us. Yeah, I know. Jeez. This really? is the wrong place to get your oh, news. <laughs> You really, just, really is yeah. hell over there. You switch the <laughs> dial there. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, Wentworth, for listening. Hopefully, you're not burning down. Wentworth Point, excuse me. I wouldn't want to lop off the end there. No. Uh, hopefully, you're not burning down, mates, <laughs> and that you're just throwing more shrimps on the barbie. Um, and if you could leave us a drunk voicemail, 805 538 yeah, 237 because there's nothing I want to have sex with more than an Australian accent. Oh, yeah. Even my Siri on my iPhone is set to Australian Mine accent. Mine, too? Yeah. <laughs> Every time she talks to me, I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> She's, like, butchering all the streets that are named after Spanish words, oh, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it sounds so awesome. Supple Vita. <laughs> <laughs> Supple Vita. Yeah. Supple Vita. Oh, yeah. Love Australian accents. So, please. Send us a drunk voicemail. Also, don't forget to hashtag show us your beers on the social medias. Rate and subscribe the podcast on Apple Podcast, iTunes, Spreaker, Spotify, wherever it is you do your podcast listening. Give us a nice little rating and review. All right. Everyone's looking dry over here. Yep. <sighs> oh. oh, God. It's a hair desert over there. <laughs> or a mouse threw up. Uh, let's wet the old whistles. <laughs> Grab your libations, pals. It's time for Beer of the Week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend. And I say, I think I'll have myself a beer. You got it queued up. <laughs> I was going to get a more appropriate song for this. I didn't want to get sued. Oh, I see. <laughs> That band is known for suing people. Oh, that's true. Kind of. Uh, hey, man, we're drinking your beer, yo. We are, and we're talking about it. Maybe we should leave their name out of it. Just talk about the brewery. That's true. Maybe we should. <laughs> we are drinking the Arrogant Consortia's Internight Pilsner, as brought to us by Dan. It's 5.7%. Oh, yeah. 45. 45 IBUs of Whoa. Pilsner. <laughs> Has an 85 on Beer Advocate and a 345 on Untapped. Untapped's not giving it very much love. It says, in collaboration with that band, <laughs> they do say the band's name, this beer represents the Cataclysmic Collection Collision. Wow. That's two hard words next to each other. Cataclysmic Collision of two uncompromising supernatural forces. It's a crisp and refreshing Pilsner that, much like the band, transcends genres, shatters preconceptions, and challenges convention. And also, they like to sue the shit out of people. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, enter night, say your <laughs> prayers, whatever. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that truck hits the bed. <laughs> oh, man. It's the best part of the video. Oh, God. They they peaked. What was it, like, 89 they peaked? Yeah, that's right. With the uh, enter night mm-hmm. there. Or enter Sandman. Mm-hmm. Whenever I hear that song, I just think of the Sandman from ECW. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, getting drunk, coming out to the ring. <laughs> so, uh, this is something. Not, yeah. Not a lot to the aroma. 
But boy, is this a hoppy pilsner! Isn't it interesting? Yeah, yeah. That's when I when I got it because I'm not you know much of a pilsner person in the first place. Like, but I had been kind of heading back down that way. Like, I was kind of into a logger phase and everything. Yeah. And I was like, pilsner. I guess I'll give it a try. And what I got in my head pilsner, was I don't even know her. <laughs> what I got in my head was that you know it's like it's like. Budweiser. It was like the thing I could think of was like a Pilsner. It's uh-huh. like, get that in your head. That's what it's going to taste like. And when I drank it, I'm like, oh my God, this is so much better. Like, this is good. You know, it's got and flavor to it. It really does. And, you know, it's like, like I, I don't think I've really kind of ventured down that avenue of Pilsner, really. Yeah. Well, I'd say this is not uh, a common Pilsner that you would find out in the market. I mean, Mm-mm. this is hoppy AF. 50, what was it? 45 IBUs. Yes. On a Pilsner is pretty hefty. It's good. Yeah. Um, you get the lightness of a, of a Pilsner, mm-hmm. but you also get that following of a, I got a little bit of juiciness, but mostly yeah. uh, ending up with some pine, some dank hops it's very welcome mm-hmm. it's very stone mm-hmm. or arrogant consortia right which is stone spinoff which is interesting i mean it's like uh if if you could tell me that that was kind of their combo right there like you know stone with that band yeah probably would taste like this yeah they get their little fuse in there you know you get the cheap beer that you get from the band you know, like <laughs> to go watch the you watch them in concert concert beer and then yeah. stone gets their little spin on it and they uh, up the ABV a little bit yeah. too while they're at it. They kicked it, yeah. They kicked it, kicked it up a notch. That's right. Most pilsners don't get up to five point mm-hmm. seven. Yeah, it's um, yeah. IBUs up your ass. That's right. <laughs> That's my favorite song from the band. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> IBUs up your ass. Yeah. They got a little, uh, I don't know, stained. <laughs> yeah. Been a while. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, well, very good bring. I, I enjoy oh, yeah. this. Scott, what say you? Um, definitely good stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I love the mapley smell, <laughs> which I have. Oh, you know what? That might be I didn't uh, rinse out my glass. Yeah, you never, <laughs> never, never glass. mind. Yeah, no, yeah, cross that out. Yeah, but no, I love the taste. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good stuff. Goes down easy. Yes, it does. Um, all right, we got a lot to get to. Crotch talk. Dan's got another man. Dan's doing his job. Wow. Got another movie to talk about. Yeah, I have no you. life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a new beer review from our friend up in Canada. A. We have a bullpen beer that I'm very excited about, and of course, some booze news. So let's crack right into it. Have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. Let's see. No, gr- Oh, I do have one grievance. I'll start off good. I'll go grievance, and I'll end good again. So I did some beer research over the weekend. Went out to, uh, went down to, I should say, the South Bay area in uh, Los Angeles. Hit up Hermosa Brewing with uh, some friends there. And uh, not bad. Never heard of them. Stopped in. Had a couple of good ones. They had one called Hazy AF. That was probably my favorite of the day. The best part about that, like we walked in, this is what the wife and I often will do. We'll walk in and we'll see they have like eight or 10 beers on tap. And we'll, hey, how many, you know, on a flight? Oh, uh, four. All right. Two flights, one of everything. And uh, so we did that. It was great. The one she liked the most was the Hazy AF. And I said, what do you want? She goes, I'll get it. So she walks up and she's right in front of me. And she, the guy goes, hey, what do you want? She goes, I want that hoppy as fu- or a hazy as fuck. <laughs> I was like, man, just going right for it. Goes, oh, I mean, man. I mean, AF. Sorry, <laughs> guys. Like, no, you're good. We named it for a reason. <laughs> but boy, did she not filter herself, which is unlike her. She had a few beers. It was, it was great. <laughs> uh, and then we traveled up the coast a few minutes and hit up El Segundo Brewing. Brewing, ah. uh, most famous for their Broken Skull IPA. Of oh course. hell yeah! Did not have any Broken Skull because uh, well, that's easy to get up here where we what? are. So <laughs> what? Oh hell no. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> so there was no need to have it because uh, I can get it readily up here. But had some of their other offerings, uh, had their Imperial Stout and stuff, and it was good stuff. Always nice stop in at El Segundo. Haven't been there in a while. Um, never been there. Never I've been, been? I've wanted to go there, but... It's good. It's uh, it's oh, surprisingly man. small. I <laughs> heard that. Uh, we, <laughs> we walked up. Like, we walked up, and the wife's like, oh, that's where it's at. I'm like, yeah. And we walked in. She goes... There's not a lot of space in here. I thought it'd be bigger. I was like, why? Because they distribute Stone Cold's yeah, beer. I've heard that a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she goes, yeah, I just figured they're, they're well known for a beer, so they'd be a little bigger. Yeah. I was like, well, mm-hmm. sorry, they're not. Um, but the beer they put out is delicious. But Stone Cold wasn't there? He was, unfortunately not. Then I would have gotten some of his beer. Uh, <laughs> You'd have to. Yeah. yeah of course. And cheers yeah, with him. He stunned he'd, you. Yeah. 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 He'd been standing right behind you, ready yeah, to give yeah. you the double flippos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every time I, because, you know, we start off with a flight, so every one I order, it's like, I'll, I'll take the Pilsner. What? Yeah. <laughs> and the pail. What? <laughs> what? 
And the hazy. What? Oh, man. Drinking your Pilsner like a silly little jackass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Over here drinking a real beer. That's right. Yeah, so, you got to visit your Graceland over there. Man. <laughs> like, you got to go there. Yeah, what is your problem? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> oh, man. Got to get you some, some El Segundo field trip. Yeah. Just Definitely. go swimming in the tank. Yeah, no kidding. Where do you guys brew the broken skull? <laughs> <laughs> sir, sir, no, sir. Yeah, oh, there. Man. Chris Splash. Yeah. Um, a little bit of a grievance. Uh-oh. You know, we, I grieved about Home Depot a few weeks back, and uh, that grievance is still ongoing because they still haven't called us back after many calls to them, and uh, our slider door is still leaking water. What? Oh, God. But completely different issue. We, uh, I installed our, our vanity downstairs, a bathroom vanity, and the old, first of all, the house, the house is old, it was built in the early 70s, and so like the, the plumbing isn't quite up to par as newer houses would be, and so ripped out the old sink, went to install the new one, and it didn't quite line up, and I thought, well, fuck, I don't want to call a plumber and have him install you know, a whole new piping out of the wall oh yeah and i i could change out the p trap which is the little curly pipe at the bottom that traps water in it uh i was afraid to because there's been other pipes in this house where i've un you know i've, I've unscrewed it and it just totally stripped like it was rusted together i was like fuck i don't want to deal with that because once again plumber's coming out yeah so went to home depot explained my issue showed him the old piece asked if he could Help. And this is the man. Like I asked one guy, he goes, "You know, what? I'm gonna get my supervisor on this, so he helps you." I was like, "There you go. All right, cool." So the guy super- yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So about 13 <laughs> minutes later, the supervisor. That's what walks they call out. him. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably just a joke. He's like, "Just Fuck, a lot guy." I don't yeah. want to talk to this guy. I'll, I'll throw Roger on him. Right, right. Yeah. Rudy, I forget his I, I, name. I told him you're the supervisor. Yeah. <laughs> fuck again, man. Say when your friends came in. <laughs> he shows up. Who the here, fuck here. is this guy? <laughs> Quick, put the apron on. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he, he walks up. I show him everything that's going on. I tell him what's up tell him what i need and he's like oh get one of these it's like no no the pipe needs threading on both <laughs> sides and he goes oh okay well you need this one i said oh that's way too long heard that before uh it's way too long it needs to be no more than you know x amount and he goes well just cut it <laughs> first of all, i want to say like you think if i had the tools to cut pipe i'd be at fucking home depot but also that would void the need of this pipe because I need threading on both ends. So I cut it. There's no more threading. <laughs> oh, okay. He, he's, he's like, what about this? I was like, no, that won't work. And then, I was never like a dick, like, hey, you idiot. But I was like, that won't should've work. Been. I know I should have. I wish I was because I was like, oh, that won't work because of this. Oh, yeah. Huh. I don't know. Walked off. <laughs> <laughs> not, not even like a... Hey man, I'm really sorry. I can't help you, and our main plumbing guy will be here oh, tomorrow, no. kind of thing. Just like I don't know, walked off. That's against our policy, You're right? <laughs> Turned it. Not that you were. I mean, there. their policy. Their, yeah, yeah, the the apron people's policy. Yeah. Turned to the wife. I was like, any chance he's going to get someone who's actually intelligent, or no. is he just leaving? She's like, no, nah, he's he's leaving. And uh, sure enough, he never came back. So we sat there, we Googled for like 25 more minutes, and we found this piece that that did the trick. It was a flexible tubing piece, which I'm sure people would tell me is not the right thing, but it works. And there's no leaking water. As so. long as it works. It works. Nothing leaks. Um, but fuck that guy. Wasn't it? It was like Rudy or something. Oh, uh, not yeah. Rudy. Not Ru- Rudy no. or... <laughs> Rudy Poo? Rudiger. Rudy Poo candy ass. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, fuck just, you, Home Depot. Yeah, just... Yeah, knowing somebody I know that works at the Home Depot. Right, right. A cashier in the garden. And just because there's a cashier in the garden, people ask him garden questions. And the guy just <laughs> makes up answers. And it, it makes him happy. Does that so. guy look a lot like you? Similar, yeah. yeah. Not, Similar not quite as old, right? Yeah. Right, but, yeah. but who is? Yeah, equally bald and ugly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's fun when people walk up and will will ask you a question and answer it themselves. And oh, even yeah. even if it's the wrong answer, you go, "Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, sounds yep. good. You're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you notice how I'm not amongst the plants. I'm just ringing them up. I'm, I, I or, or the, he actually had some guy one time asked him questions about the garden. Uh huh. And he ups in, I don't know, I don't He goes, well, you're in the garden. You don't know what's going on? Nope. And the person told him, I'm a cashier. You have any questions about the cash register? It'd be great. He's like, well, how do you punch in? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. So I'll call somebody. <laughs> they won't answer, but yeah. I'll call them. Well, I discovered there's a brand new Lowe's across the street, which I think is either uh, perfect, stupid or ballsy of Lowe's. They opened up a brand new Lowe's right across the street from Home Depot. Yeah. Like To me, that's shots fired. <laughs> and went over there and they were extremely pleasant and helpful 
Uh, so I'll be going there from now on. Once, there you once go. the unfortunate thing is, like, we have a bunch of Home Depot gift cards from the wedding. So once those are exacerbated, which they're almost there, I will uh, no longer be needing to go to Home Depot. I will <laughs> be a Lowe's person only. Um, Your friend should just say, and the next time they have like a, well, well don't you know anything? Well, like, well, no, actually, I'm filling in for the botanist. He should be in <laughs> next week. Yeah, you'll be here in an hour. Yeah. Oh well, wait. Fuck. <laughs> I've heard they you know, like make up a lot of the answers. This guy could even make up answers. Yeah. He was an idiot. Take well, my, my friend figures, hey, well, you know, I'm not going to see him again, so I'll just give him the answer that they want to hear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They'll be so mad they won't come back. <laughs> I had that happen. They'll get mad at somebody. I won't be here when they get mad. It's so. true. Yeah. I had that happen actually at a, at a not Home Depot. It was at a um, now defunct guy. What was that hardware store that went out of business like a year ago? Ace. They, no, not Ace. Mm. They just opened up around the corner. Um, Lowe's bought them. Oh. Anyways, yeah. not, not important. Uh, I went Home in there. base? Huh? No, never mind. Oh. <laughs> I went in there. I was like, hey, I need Orchard? the little. <laughs> Orchard. Yes. <laughs> Osh. Osh, yeah. Yeah. I need a little piece to connect my. Uh, Who doesn't? Fr- <laughs> to the fridge to the water line. And I said, I, 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 I have this coming out oh, of the wall, and right. I have this coming out of the fridge. He goes, oh, this is exactly what you need. I was there for that. You were there with me. Yeah. And I we, thought it was at Home Depot. Yeah. And he goes, and he was so confident, too. He's like, oh, this is what you need. Yeah. I was like, are you sure? Because it looks, he's like, this is definitely what you need. I was like, oh, all right. Bought it, got home. I was like, this is not even close to what I need. <laughs> Guy had like, no fun. Excuse me, idea. put your apron on. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're out <laughs> of was, uniform. He was infiltrating. <laughs> um, so anyways, fuck you, Home Depot. And then finally, ended on some good. I... I can't believe I forgot to talk about this last week, but uh, New Year's, we had a few people, a very small, small get together, but our friends Big Dick Nick and Coley from the Booze League came over, and they brought with them, in order to uh, celebrate the new year, their complete vertical of Stone's Woot Stout. Whoa. So oh, wow. We had 14 through 19. Oh. Yeah, 14, 15, oh, 16, wow. 17, 18, 19. What a treat. Yeah, six... Uh, Woot Stouts and lined them all up, poured them all at the same time. Whoa. Went through them all to find out, like, oh, you know, which ones compare. Uh, 2015 was my favorite. I thought 16, 16 was my, what I remember being my favorite, but having them all next to each other, 15 was my favorite. Uh, 17 was my least favorite, followed by probably 14, but 15, definite favorite. 19 took a turn. 19 was signif- significant, like 2% lower in ABV than the rest. And was like way more chocolatey. It was just very different. It was not like the rest of them, um, but very good. But yeah, 2015. If you guys can get your hands on it, it was my favorite. We got a little ham skied too. <laughs> After that, BDN goes, uh, "Hey, I brought over. It just so happens it's Tuesday from the brewery, or, or no, it was Black Tuesday. Black Tuesday. You want to open that up?" And I was like, "I don't think we need to, man, because <laughs> that bad boy's twenty percent." Whoa! And I was like, I, th- I think we should stick to eight oh fives for the rest of the night. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of booze, and uh, he's like, "No, let's open it." That's about the last thing I remember. No, oh. it's like him and I sharing a Black Tuesday. <laughs> Damn. So, uh, but a good night, a, a good New Year, and uh, lots yeah. of good beer. So, you know what's kind of funny is, and, and actually, I kind of thought about this today. I can remember last year's New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. I don't really remember this year's New Year's Eve. It was only a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Wow. What? I know. Because you were so hammered this year? Or? I didn't think I was. Oh. I mean, apparently I, you I were. Just, I just, like, oh, you know, kind of drink my beer the whole night, which which is, you know, I, I don't go to a lot of detail. It's just a thing we do every year. We go to the wife's cousin, the same house every year. And, I mean, I just, you know, bring my own beer and drink it. <laughs> Sit in the corner with your own six pack. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> 12 pack, well, excuse me. 12 pack. Uh, yeah, K's, K's, uh, yeah. K's, uh, whatever. But I don't know why. Keg. I mean, last year, I can remember last year. I mean, I think I drank pretty much the same amount. but hmm. That much older. I don't know if it's age or it's true. alcohol uh, <laughs> content. So. A little both. Man, eh, probably. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, Sorry you remembered it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's it for Crotch Talk, I think. Anybody else need grievances? Everybody doing nope. good beyond that? Good. Good, good. It's a great year so far. So far. Yeah. It's well underway. Uh, all right. Dan has a uh, movie review for oh, us. Oh, yeah. All right. So uh, last week, 
This week? Whatever. Some week. Sometime. Yeah. I watched uh, Zombieland Double Tap. Oh, boy. Okay. And this yeah. is the sequel to Zombieland, obviously. Mm-hmm. And uh, that stars you know Woody Harrelson, uh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus? Oh, wow. <laughs> Jesus is in it. It's pretty good. Actually, no. Well, Bill Murray was in the first one, so he's kind of like Jesus, I guess. Right? <laughs> mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the, Emma, Stone, Emma Stone, some people like that. But I got to say, like, the first Zombieland... That was a really good movie. Like as far oh, as like it? yeah, oh yeah. I would say like that was in like my zombie movie like Mount Rushmore. Okay. Yeah, you, you got to have it on there. If wow. you're curious, I would probably say it was 28 Days Later is on there. Yeah. Zombie Land, uh Shaun of the Dead and uh what was the other one? Is it after with Wolf, with, uh, Wolf Cop? <laughs> oh, but that's not a zombie movie. See, that's a werewolf cop oh, movie. Oh, that's a different yeah. category. And then, okay, yeah, sorry. as far as werewolf cop movies, yeah, with Wolf Cop is George Washington. You <laughs> 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 can't, okay. can't start any conversation without <laughs> right. Wolf Cop. But uh, it, and I watched this movie. Usually I'm not like a uh, sequel person, but that's how much I, I regarded the first movie. Sure. You know what I mean? Like I, I, would, I still, to this day, have not seen Super Troopers 2. Oh really? It's See, just I I recommend it. I know I gotta watch it. I cannot it. recommend Anchorman two. No, but I can recommend See, Super Troopers, and I haven't seen, haven't seen Anchorman two either. It's just and it's, that's okay. It's just something that I you know I know it's gonna suck, hmm. so like I stay away from it. You yeah. know what I mean? And for whatever reason, I knew this movie was not gonna live up to the first one, but I just I love the first one so much to say it's gotta be okay. No. I was sadly mistaken. Really? This movie blows balls. Oh, it no. is so terrible. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, it, 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 it just kind of bummed me out. And I think, like, because I was kind of drinking to get through it. Oh, and God. um, I kind of found myself in a stupor where I was thinking, like, I wasn't even paying attention to the plot it anymore. Happens to me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention to the plot anymore. I was just kind of concentrating on, I was like, so why Staring did you guys make Stone. this movie again? I mean, did they <laughs> did they throw a bunch of money at you guys? Clearly. Like, you know what I mean? Because they, they, usually, like, if you're making a sequel, you got something else to say. You know what I mean? Like, sure. Like Super Troopers too. I'm sure there's like another like plot or something. It wasn't just a. Uh, I'm sure there's some recall to the jokes, but there's a, yes. a different situation that they get into or or something. Like this movie was just well. In the case of Super Troopers, it's a similar su- a situation. More escalated in different location. Oh, okay. If that makes sense. I'm going to have to check it out. Yeah. But this one is, uh, I mean, there's just some really dumb jokes that don't work in (laughs) this one. Like, they run into, like, uh, Woody Harrelson and, uh, Jesus, who's the other guy? Jesse Eisenberg? Mm -hmm. Is that who it is? I I watched the movie. You'd think I'd know, right? One would think. Yeah. But um, they run into, like, absolute clones of themselves, played by, uh, I think it's Thomas Middleditch and, uh, um, Luke Wilson, the actor, <laughs> yeah, Luke Wilson, and uh, and and I kind of felt like, and I like Luke Wilson and other stuff. Like I really liked him in old school, but I really felt like he was really miscast as like the clone to Tallahassee in this movie. And uh, man, it's just, uh, and they really went way too long with that. Like in Shaun of the Dead, there's a there's a moment, there's like a scene where they run into their clones, mm-hmm. but you know, and it, but it's just really quick. Like they just say hello, 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 and they just go by each other, and it's like, oh shit, look, it's just like them, and that's the joke. Okay, we're done with it. Let's move on <laughs> to the rest of the movie. Right. This one, I mean, they just, I mean, they dedicated a long, a long, large <laughs> port of, portion of the movie. To them, just running into their clones and like, like you know, how are they similar? How are they different? I'm like, I don't care anymore. You know, like, <laughs> so I don't know. And and I got and there was no zombies in this movie. There was hardly any zombies. What? Oh, really? Yeah, like they they create this Lost like their budget. Yeah, they create yeah. like this this super race of zombies that like you supposedly can't kill. Like you have to like really like. They called them like T-800s, like the like the Terminator. Oh, okay. Because they, they don't die. And uh, you never see these fucking zombies until like the very end, which I'm sad to say I couldn't take anymore and I turned the movie off. Oh, you wow. didn't even finish it. I, I just, I couldn't take it. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was bad. I do not recommend Zombie wow. Land w, Double Tap. Double that, Tap, W, Double. And I looked it up. It is Jesse Eisenberg. Aha, yes. I got it. And that's really too bad. I mean, I, I hate zombie movies, but I love staring at Emma Stone. Yeah. That's just too bad. Yeah. She's she's pretty hot in the movie. Yeah. But I don't know. It's kind of a bummer. It's just the dialogue from the other characters. Like, they were yeah. pretty good. 
Uh, nah, some of their shit was a little forced, but there was just like two characters. Like there's this blonde chick who just, I could not handle, like they purposely made her annoying, but she ended up just being annoying. Like <laughs> I was like, God, I can't handle her. Didn't even need to try. Yeah. And then it was like this <laughs> douchebag, uh, boyfriend of the little girl who was Wichita. Like, you know, like he's like this total douche and like, I don't know, just their characters were not believable for me. They're just like too over the top stupid. That's bad when you can't believe a zombie movie. Uh, no. <laughs> right. Really? <laughs> Get your act together, people. That's right. Well, good. Then I won't go see it. Do not. Yeah. Because Zombieland, we all know I'm not in for scary movies or really zombies or anything like that, but Zombieland, the original one, did look like a movie I would almost see. It's a fun movie. Like, it looked funny, zombie-ish, but also funny. It's a fun movie. All right. Good to know. Mm -hmm. I still need to see Wolf Cop. (laughs) No. I admit it. That is a good one. Yeah. So, Um, all right. So, booze quote of the week. No old-timey word, but we have a booze quote of the week. This one comes to us by way of Johnny Carson. He said, I know a man who gave up smoking, drinking, smoking. Wow. I'm going to start over just for anyone out there. It's a big one. You should give up reading. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I'd love to. <laughs> but I'm not handing this over to Scott. I can do it. Yeah. He <laughs> says, I know a man who gave up smoking, drinking, sex, and rich food. He was healthy right up to the day he killed himself. There you go. That's got true. it. Finally got Perfect. Him. Yes. Got him. Ex- got him. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Let's quickly move on to uh, a classier part of the show. This one's a classy dame with a great palate. It's Beer Babe of the Week. It is indeed. Uh, her name is Deb, and you can find her on the grams at Deb's Beer. Deb's oh. beer, all one word. I like oh, it. really? Yeah, I like that. No spaces, dots, dashes. Oh, nothing look at like that. that. Yes, that 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 handle was available. Hey, isn't that magical? Yeah. I know. She must have lucked out on that one. After mm-hmm. a few tries, I can do that. Deb's beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because there's no spaces or dots. No or spaces yeah. or yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and this one, she's drinking a Goza from oh god, another foreign country. Oh. Zalaz, Zalaz, nailed it. Here it is. Anyways. Uh, you should make sure you follow her on the grams at Deb's Beer. I think you'll be quite glad that you did. All right. Got a few more things to get to. Of course, we have our bullpen beer and some booze news to talk about. But I think before we get into any of that, we should hear from Mike up in the Great White North. Oh, yeah. oh shit. With his My latest... old pal from Twitter. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> With his latest beer review. What's up, gents? Happy New Year's to you guys. It is Mike, a.k.a. Sir Food Savage, coming to you from the Great White North, and it is cold as shit up here. Holy cow, you think I'd be coming at you with a stout review? No. An Imperial stout review? Nope. I am coming at you with Jelly King Daydream, a sour IPA with tangerine, pineapple, passion fruit, and lactose from a collaboration from the Bellwoods Brewing out of Toronto, Ontario, and other half brewing from New York. Now, let me just say, when a brewery emails you at 7 in the morning on a Saturday to say you should probably order this beer, you fucking order this beer. Because, sweet Jesus, who emails on a Saturday morning that early? Let's try this here. So I poured it. It literally looks like Five Alive. It looks like juice. Smells fruity. Like, it smells delicious. Holy shit. Oh. Oh, sweet lord, baby Jesus. I'm not a big sour guy, but the sour isn't strong on this. This is... Holy shit. Fucking A. This is a delicious beer. Oh, Jelly King Daydream. Holy cow, I'm gonna bring this to work tomorrow. Oh, boys. When there's a collaboration with other half, you buy it. Fucking A. If this is how my year starts with great ass beer like this, whoo Well, cheers, gents. May your Lakers win championships. May your Dodgers be Dodgers. Have a great one. <laughs> may our Dodgers not be Dodgers. Don't I'd like them to win one, too. Don't Come on. Be started. Yeah. But oh, yes, man. may our Lakers win championships. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know about passion fruit with the lactose. I mean, he makes it sound good, but 
I am all on board with that. Five Alive. What is that? I got to tell you, man. I, it's like an old school drink from like back in the days. Like he just like brought me back to my childhood. When he said that, I was like, what the hell did he just say? Yeah, like I think their their thing was like it's like five different fruits kind of mixed into one drink. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Mike, I mean, I, 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 th- I agree, but does this guy have a problem? He's drinking this stuff at seven in the morning and taking it to work? <laughs> I don't hear a problem with that. I thought the problem was that he got the email at seven in the morning. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I Who emails that about, early? Yeah, four hours later. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, come buy this by the time I woke up. Like, <laughs> Sold out, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. I'm on board. S- snoozy loose. Yeah, yeah. I'm on board. Wow. Five Alive fo- Frozen Concentrate Beverage. Yeah. Is nice. it like defunct here? Do they still have it in Canada? Like, what's the deal? I I'm on Instacart and they have it for uh, $2 a frozen tube. It's one of those frozen ones that you mix uh, with water. Oh, really? God, I haven't seen one of those since I was a kid. No I, I swear to God, like when it was in uh, at least production over here, like it was like in a can already. May, uh, maybe they have different versions huh. of it. This is the concentrate that you, you know, you dump in a pitcher and wow. fill up with water. Um, each serving has <laughs> 27 grams of sugar in it. Yeah, get up and look at this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's, here's a picture for you. Five yeah. Alive uh, citrus. That's it. It's that's a it? little different. Like I think back I'm sure they've the, updated the logo. Right. Back in the days, I think they actually had like the five different fruits, like around the phrase five alive. Oh, really? Yeah. And it was like a silver can. If I remember right. That's funny. Oh, I'm Okay. Let's try it, eh? I'm finding they do have juice box versions of it, too. Huh. What? Okay. That's interesting. Mike, you have to let us know if you guys still have that shit up there. I know, right? Because I never even heard of it. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it used to be pretty abundant back in the days, and you don't see it anymore. I've, yeah, I've never heard. I, I was a Sunny D kind of kid, I guess. Uh, <laughs> not a five alive, but uh, interesting. All right. Make sure you follow Mike on the grams at Sir Food Savage, all one word, and... Uh, you should piss him off by sending him a bunch of 7 a.m. emails. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, come buy our beer. A five Alive. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be good. I might do that, man. <laughs> you should. That'd be great. Sir Food Savage on the Grams and on Twitter. Yeah. 7 a.m. My day's almost done. So God. Old people get up so early. Yeah, That's yeah. crazy. And we go to bed early. That's true. After our, our early Denny's dinner thing. Yeah. Dinner at noon. Yeah. Senior dinner. Yeah. In bed yeah. by Carol's. four. Yep. Caro's. Do Caro's still exist? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Caro's and Coco's, I think, uh, went out of business. Bob's so. big boy. Bob's big boy. Because pe- yes. old people die. So Right. Who's going to support yeah, those places? They, how can they stay in business? I'm surprised that Marie Callender's is still around. Is like I, yeah, oh, yeah, they are. I, I know they... I know Maybe they, they make, can die there. Yeah. yeah. I know they make pies and stuff, but looking other than for that, a restaurant to die. Yeah. Caro's Isn't that interesting? It. Like the old people kind of like... They they gravitate other places. Right. Like you're right. They die and they then sleep that place. Earlier. What? I'm I'm sure if you died in Marie Calendars, you wouldn't be the first person. <laughs> Or the 10th. <laughs> like, I wonder if, like, the old place we go to is going to be, like, BJ's or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to be like, oh, God, you went to BJ's? Only like, old people are there. Like, hey, this is a great spot. <laughs> or, like, all of our, like, grandkids would be like, you go to breweries? Yeah. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it'd be interesting to find out. Mm-hmm. I'll let you know when I die. Dave and Buster's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even I'm getting over Dave and Buster's, though. <laughs> That's true. They yeah. opened one near the house when we went. I was like, all right. Bunch of kids, man. Bunch of kids. Sucks. Beer selections, okay. They need to do like institution and put like a, a, a age limit on the, yes. on the entrance. Or at least have certain sections. Yeah. Like institution, brewery out here in our area, has certain sections that are adults only. Yeah. So I'm done with that. Yeah, because they did that at the collection too, like where I like to go kind of hang out and get some brews. Hipster bar. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Hipster bar. But they're right uh, well, I guess on the other block of the hipster bar, right. they put like a jump house or something like that for oh, kids. God. So you know that's what the parents are. I guess that's good for them. They're just going to drop little Johnny off to go <laughs> jump around in the jump box or whatever. Meanwhile, they're getting drunk with me somewhere at Whole Foods. Right. But at some point, those kids are going to be wandering around the streets. Well, that's not unlike uh, out here. There's a new brewery called Tarantula Hill. And while it's a great space... Their outdoor area has a nice long strip, and they allow kids or allow kids. And every time I'm there, there are children just running up and down the deck because it's <laughs> it's long enough for them to get a good run going. Oh, damn! Oh, it's so fucking annoying. And it's not the brewery's fault, other than. 
they need to like place their tables differently so it's mm-hmm. not a straight shot all the way down the deck. Yeah, it's, it's true. Fucking huh? annoying. It's like, hey, I'm old and I'm trying to enjoy my beer and get a nice buzz on, and I got a little shit face over here running around like a crazy person. <laughs> Fat Johnny over here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm old and I'm drunk. I'm trying to run over these kids. Yeah, yeah that's right. Trying to drown myself. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, all right. Enough of us being old. Uh, we got a bullpen beer and some news. Everybody ready with the uh, bullpen? Should we make the call? Oh yeah, do it. Let's do it. Let's make that call. Are we supposed to wait? <laughs> <laughs> he calls to the bullpen for beer. Yes, he does. I have been looking forward to this for quite some time. I saw this on the internets probably a month and a half ago. Two of the breweries that I enjoy the most, two not the most, but two I enjoy greatly because I enjoy them all. Dan and San Diego got together. Modern Times and Society. They call us at long last. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. 8.5%, 406 on untapped, and a 90 on Beer Advocate. It says, as you may infer from the name, this one was a long time coming. <laughs> We're thrilled that we finally got together with the homies at Society to create the magnificent West Coast style double IPA. Hopped with a towering abundance of Nelsa, Citra, and Centennial, it's a righteous fiesta of lupulin laden radness oh man boy was that a mouthful yeah so as soon as i saw it, i was like i need to get this so a huge thank you to craft sipping on instagram go follow craft sipping that's how we got our hands on this bad boy uh he he posted a picture of it i said oh i'm so jealous we wanting to get our hands on that and uh he's like what's your address oh like, what so uh an amazing person make sure you follow craft sipping hooking nice. up the beers. I, I love the beer community on the grams, just trading beers and hooking people up. So, hell yeah. Uh, go give him a, a follow and a what's up. What do you fellas think of this West Coast style double IPA? Man, seriously juicy. Mm-hmm. It's like a boozy five alive oh, yeah. over here. I got to tell yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm digging it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It good stuff. It is. Yes, indeed. Got a little haze to it. It's not exactly see through, but it's not like a hazy. Mm-hmm. It just uh, has a little unfilteredness to it. Um, yeah, comes in strong with that old school West Coast pine and dankness. Yeah. Uh, finishes with a little warmth of booze. It's good. Yeah. Hey, Scott, can I see that can over there? He likes these cans. I got to well, see that can. Nothing like a good can. That, that right oh, that oh, one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, yeah. no. Put your pants back on, please. Yeah. Oh, man. Beer can. This made me nervous. Yeah. Oh. Hear me pull my oh, pants Oh, man. Up. Look at this. Some sweet can art. Yeah. And of course, as always, we'll, we'll post pictures on the grams and the Facebooks and everything else we have out there. I don't know there. how to describe it. It's very psychedelic. It is. Lots of colors. Kind of 80s yeah. kind of. Yeah. Little, almost like yeah. little like like stripes going through records Back when or I was something. just a kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is good stuff. It is yeah, good. Yeah, it is. I was so excited to get my hands on this. So mm-hmm. so thank you, Craft Sippin. Make sure you guys go follow him on the grams. Uh, this, is, this is delicious, delicious beer. And I'll be drinking this nice and slowly. Um, all right. Let's move on to some booze news. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for Booze News. A couple months ago, we talked about Boulder Beer Company, that they were ceasing production and that they were just going to have a tap room, but they were going to farm out to a a contract brewer. Well, now they are selling their tap room. Their last day there is January 18th. And uh, go check them out if you're in the Boulder Beer, Boulder Beer, Boulder, Colorado area. Go check out Boulder Beer. Um, They're still going to be doing some contract brewing, so you can find them on tap and in balls and cans at your local uh, spots. But um, there will be no tap room anywhere. They said they may open up a pub sometime in the not-too-distant future. Hmm. But uh, interesting. Seems like a few breweries are doing this. They're they're closing up their physical locations. They're just contract brewing and uh, hitting the shelves and the bars. Yeah. I wonder how profitable that is. You know, Is it just enough to keep the name alive, or is it you yeah. guys actually making a bunch of money? Off? Well, time will tell. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. I mean, on one hand, like if you, you know, it's it's less, it's more distribution, right? Uh, it can be. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you can focus your funds elsewhere, like to distribution. Mm-hmm. So, so if I run a tap room, but um, usually, I actually I don't know, but I think that the brewery, just because you're contracting them to brew it, I don't think you necessarily get to use their distribution hookups. Oh, okay. I think you still need your own distribution. I could be wrong. 
And if that's the case, then it makes total sense. Use their distribution hookups. Yeah, but you're probably right. That probably doesn't work that way. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Because hmm. I would imagine, obviously don't know, I would imagine that it would have to be under that brewery's name in order to use their distribution. Now, they could introduce, hey, we're using you know Joe Blow distribution. Meet Joe Blow, and then maybe you can strike something up. But I would imagine in order to distribute, you'd have to be under that company's name. Right. And that would par- probably be part of the headline, too, if that was the <laughs> right. case. Yeah. And now changing their name, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyways, if you're in the area, go check them out. January 18th, coming up here in a few days, is the last day. Uh, Manhattan Assemblyman Harvey Epstein introduced a bill to more than double New York's excise tax on beer from 14 cents a gallon to 30 cents a gallon. Trying to pay for like college and shit. This is not the way to do it. No, No. definitely not. Yeah. Uh, If you ever thought you might want to get involved in politics, (laughs) now's the time. No kidding. Si se puede. Yeah. Yeah. Keep the beer prices low in New York. Save the beer. Save the beer. Because you know the breweries are not going to pay this. They'll just pass it along to you, the drinkers. Mm Mm-hmm. And yep. then there you go. Yep. So, um, a bill would allow cold beer sales at Indiana grocery stores and convenience stores. I didn't know this. <laughs> Apparently, in Indiana, and I'm I'm sure there's at least one other state like Arkansas or at something. At least you cannot sell cold beer in a grocery store. You can only get cold beer at liquor stores. How weird! <laughs> How fucking weird <laughs> is that? They have to serve warm beer, oh. or not serve, but sell. Uh, so anyways, a bill would allow grocery and convenience stores to sell refrigerated beer uh, has already been filed in Indiana State Senate. Currently, the, only, uh, the state only allows liquor stores and restaurants with to-go sale privileges to sell cold beer. In Indiana's legislative uh, starts uh, soon, although the bill has already been introduced. Hope for its passage is dim. Indiana Grocery and Convenience Store Association President Joe Lackey told WIBC that some lawmakers will have to retire before it garners enough support to pass. Wow. So uh, some old people need to step down. Yeah. At a time when grocery stores are going out of business all over the state, people are complaining about food desserts, but yet cold beer would be one of the things that would allow some of the stores to stay open. Lackey told uh, the station, other legislation legalizing Sunday sales of alcohol in the state's grocery, liquor, drug, and convenience store passed in 2018, an effort to change the cold beer prohibition failed. So you can go buy your beer, but if you want to drink it as soon as you get home, go to a liquor store. Yeah, I wonder if that's why they're doing it. Like, they don't want people like, you know, it's like, hey, I'm going to get drunk, but it's going to be tomorrow. You know what I mean? Not rather than I'm getting drunk right in the parking lot, bro. I wish that was the reason Mm because I'd get behind that. Mm -hmm. It's stupid laws from back of the day where like as liquor stores were becoming less necessary because who the fuck needs to go to a liquor store anymore they don't have anything that a Vons doesn't unless you're going to a total wine or a bevmo yeah and then they jack up the price of right. the liquor store or too. like a yeah. specialty spot like wade's where they have some liquor you've never seen before you know other than that kind of stuff you just go to your regular liquor store there's nothing there that you can't get at the grocery store and it's jacked up prices. Yeah. So they did this so that you would go to the liquor store and they would stay in business when if there's no reason to have that business, just go out of business. Although I will say, I, I don't think cold beer is a deal breaker if the stuff is good. Like Trader Joe's will hook it up. You're right. Trader you know, Joe's has great beer. I'll, I'll get, I'll pick up their great warm beer and then <laughs> you know, drink it the next day. Yeah. You know, or what I do is I go home, I put it in the freezer <laughs> and I, and I yeah. set a timer for 30 minutes on my phone. Oh, man. Because you don't set a timer, you no, will yeah. forget. You'll forget, yeah. And then you'll have beer all over your freezer. Yes. I'm too irresponsible for that. <laughs> no, no. But, like, as you're setting it in the freezer, you got to set the timer. There's no, like, oh, set it in a minute. Nope. No. That's set it do. as you're exactly. doing it. Yeah. In fact, set it before you do it. Oh, yeah. man. Um, and then in 30 minutes, your beer will, if it's not completely ready to go, you're almost there. And if it's not completely ready, just pop it in the fridge for a few minutes. Or you can do the old uh, trick where you wrap it in a wet paper towel, stick it in the freezer for the 30 minutes. It gets a little oh, yeah. colder quicker. But um, yeah, this is such. This is one of those old rules where the I'm sure the liquor store uh, union or whatever rep complained and they got some law passed. That mixed with all the weird fucked up backwards distribution laws throughout the different states that started around Prohibition when Budweiser bought everything. It's, it's jacked up and they need to get rid of everything. Agreed. Really fucking stupid. Uh, this speaking of politics, U.S. politician wrote a column for his local paper warning people not to drink and drive, only to be arrested for driving drunk one week later. 
Brian Kolb, top Republican, New York State Assembly, crashed his car on New Year's Eve, according to police. A week earlier, had written that tragedy can only be one bad decision away and that there is no excuse for impaired driving. Mr. Kolb, at 67, was profoundly sorry in a statement after his arrest. This was a terrible lapse in judgment, one I have urged others not to take, and I take full responsibility for it, he said. There's no excuse and no justification for what occurred Tuesday evening. I made the wrong decision, and it's one I deeply regret. Idiot. <laughs> Go ahead and drink and drive, but don't write articles about it. That's true. Yeah. yeah he went too far. Yeah. Ontario County Sheriff Kevin Henderson told U.S. Media that Mr. Cole drove his state-issued car into a ditch in the town of Victor near Rochester and then failed sobriety test. Shocking. Both at the scene and later at the police station. <laughs> Couldn't even sober enough in time to pass one at the police station. Oh, man. So... Uh, Let's see. I wonder if he was five times the legal limit. Oh, man. <laughs> five times, five times, five times, five times. Booker five T. Times. I wonder if he still had his tires on his car. <laughs> um, anyways, what an idiot. Get voted out or something. Um, here's, here's your chance to get involved, people. And then finally, an underage, not, excuse me, un, four underage Michigan men were arrested for drunken horse and buggy riding. That's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> it's illegal to be a drunk on a bike, so I imagine a horse and buggy is illegal. But he, the horse isn't drunk, yeah, is horse he? is fine. Or was it? They did not specify. Mm. Uh, Michigan deputies nabbed four underage suspected drunken drivers after they were spotted throwing beer cans from their horse oh, and buggy. <laughs> <laughs> the Gladwin County Sheriff's Office said that it received a complaint from a motorist around 4 p.m. last Sunday that four men were riding on a buggy through Beaverton Township, and they seemed to be intoxicated. The four men were tossing beer cans from the horse and buggy. Uh, by the way, their picture is fantastic. The four of them, I will post this on social media. <laughs> okay. Good Lord. Can, do you have it up right now? Yeah. Okay, I got to hey, see it. You know me, I always Take have Take a it look. Up. According to the <laughs> show... <laughs> good right <laughs> according to the sheriff's office when deputies found the buggy the four were identified by the motorist initially they gave deputies false information about oh, their ages Lord. and refused to give their names however after further investigation the four were identified as levi mast andrew zook joseph miller and joseph troyer ranging 19 to 20 years old uh they're clearly amish right like you saw their pictures <laughs> There's no way they're not. Well, I mean, can they drink beer if they're Amish? I don't know how that works. Uh, I mean, they can. Rum Springa. <laughs> if they brew it themselves. Yeah. As long as technology wasn't involved. Yeah. I don't put a lot of technology into my brewing. <laughs> uh, inside the buggy, deputies found several open and unopened containers of alcohol. Police determined the four were under the influence of alcohol. Gee, you think? The men were arrested for felony obstruction of, ju of justice, disorderly person, and issued civil infractions for minors in possession of alcohol. Oh, well, that's where they went wrong, I guess. Being under the age? Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. That's a bummer, because, I, I mean, you would think, I mean, it's kind of like Uber, <laughs> where someone else is technically driving. Is it Hoover? <laughs> Horse Uber? <laughs> yeah. You know? Idiots. It's in, yeah, Wilbur. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Took one of those a few weeks ago. Oh, man. Oh, good times. <laughs> Only in Michigan, yeah. apparently, and Pennsylvania. Um, all right, that's it for us. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much to Craft Sipping for the uh, tasty, tasty beer from Modern Times and Society. Thanks to Dan for the uh, Internight mm -hmm. collaboration with the band that will go unnamed because they'll probably sue us just for saying their name. That's right. At least Lars will. <laughs> oh yeah, he he's will. the he's the one that sues everybody. That's right. Remember Napster, rest in peace. Uh, <laughs> anyways, find us at theunfilteredgentleman.com on the social medias at the unfiltered gentleman, except for Twitter at unfiltered gents. Our number is eight zero five five three eight beer two three three seven. So uh, call us when you're drunk sometime. Leave us a voicemail. And in the meantime, hope everyone is staying extremely well hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. 